Roofs are fallen, ruinous towers. The frosty gate with frost on cement is ravaged. This time on Ruins, we have a rainy day, and we're visiting Doe Castle. Now coming up to the structure, you'll notice that it kind of looks like it's two different buildings. You've got the tower house and then the walls. The tower house looks kind of quaint, and the walls look imposing and medieval. Now you'd think that that might be because this was built at different times, but no, as far as we can tell, the tower house was built right around the same time as the walls. The real reason for the architectural dissonance is simple. The walls were for one purpose and the tower house for another. The tower house was a living structure. The walls were for wall type purposes, keeping out invaders and amateur documentary filmmakers. As you can see, the gate is locked. So that continues that proud tradition of keeping out unwanted elements. This building style is inspired by Norman keeps that are popularly found in England, Spain, and France. But make no mistake, Normans, as far as we can tell, had nothing to do with building this. Actually, we don't know for sure who did, but the popular theory is that it was the O'Donnells, formerly the kings of Tyrconnell. Donegal was in times long since past called Tyrconnell. The history of this kingdom becomes foggier the farther back one casts their historical gaze, but the kingdom was apparently founded by a contemporary of the man called St. Patrick, sometime before 464 CE. After a thousand years and too much history to recount on this show, the O'Donnell clan established itself as the kings of the kingdom. Now it was no easy task being the king of a rural Celtic kingdom in the Middle Ages. Not only were there threats from within, with any number of rivals seeking to take the coveted claim, but there were external pressures as well, from both neighboring kingdoms and Norman invaders who were conquering the island in the name of the King of England. At first, though, it seems that the continental interlopers only had a mild interest in taking the O'Donnell's throne. Granted, there was the occasional war with English rule or two, but the King of England made it clear that he considered Tyrconnell to be an independent kingdom outside of his control. This was in spite of the fact that the Pope had named him Lord of Ireland. So the English were, at the time, happy enough to leave Tyrconnell be. Now the O'Donnells had plenty of other problems to worry about. They constantly found themselves in conflict with their neighbors the O'Neills, who were the rulers of Tyrone, also known as Tyrone. Clan O'Neill was another Gaelic dynasty who managed to elude foreign control throughout most of the Middle Ages. These two Celtic kingdoms were in an almost perpetual state of war, or Cold War, over border areas like the fertile Inishowen Peninsula. A constant war shapes a country. Tyrconnell found that the war shaped its basic landscape in the form of fortresses and castles. Doe Castle was one such defensive contingency, built in such a way as to hold the shore while being almost impossible to attack from land. Most placed construction somewhere between 1425 and 1474, though it wasn't mentioned by contemporary sources until about a century later. As to who built it, well, that introduces a small mystery. So what's the answer to the mystery? That depends on who you ask. Some say it was an O'Donnell. As we said, the castle wasn't even mentioned in extant records until well after it was completed. But in fact, many say that it was not the O'Donnells that built it, but instead, the McSweenies. That sounds Scottish. That's because it is Scottish. The McSweenies were a clan of Scottish warriors of noble blood. In 1310, they realized that they had sided with the losing side of the Scottish War of Independence and found themselves no longer welcome in the country. They were a tribe without a country and nobles without a castle, hardly an enviable position for a warrior tribe. So, being able to speak a language quite similar to the Irish, some of them struck it off for Donegal, hoping to regain some of their lost prestige. They quickly cleared out areas for themselves in Tyrconnell. After they had proved their loyalty to the ruling clan, the McSweenies became the official standard bearers for the O'Donnells. The clan, in time, divided itself into three separate branches, each with its own chief, who were McSweeney Bena, McSweeney Fanad, and McSweeney Doe. You can guess where the last one settled. So what did the castle see? For a while, not much. Squabbles, skirmishes, etc. However, once the English crown started to change its tune on Ireland from indifference to the opposite of indifference, Doe Castle started seeing itself in the middle of some significant moments in Irish history. For example, in 1588, 
it would have seen about a hundred members of the Spanish Armada come seeking shelter, which the clan chief at the time gave willingly. His name, and excuse the pronunciation, was Owen Og II. Now this was a bold move because at the time the English were vowing retribution on any clan chief which sheltered these foreign fighters. In 1603 it saw the English governor take the castle as a part of the Elizabethan conquests of Ireland. Later on that year, it was given to Rory O'Donnell, who was the last king of Tyrconnell and the first Earl of Tyrconnell, having bent the knee to the English. 1606 came and so did the MacSweenies, seizing the castle from the soldiers of the Earl. In 1607, the castle saw Rory O'Donnell come back to retake the castle from the MacSweenies. Later on that year, Rory fled to Europe, hoping to there regroup in order to reclaim Tyrconnell from the English once and for all. His plan stalled and he ended up dying in Rome. From here, the castle would have seen a frigate pull into Sheephaven Bay, loaded with revolutionaries anxious to join the Irish Revolution of 1641. They were led by Roe O'Neill, who ended up using Doe Castle as a base for his operations. In 1650, Doe was used as a garrison by Cromwellian forces as they swept through the country to bring it under their reign. I think you're getting the idea, but there is one more violent event of note. It has to do with the last time any Maxuinis officially held the castle. It was in 1689 when the English garrison fled the approach of King James as he marched toward Derry. The Maxuinis saw their opportunity and held the castle for two years. After two years, though, the MacSweenies realized that they had once again joined the losing side of a civil war, and thus ended their keep of Doe Castle. After the MacSweenies quit the place, the history becomes quite a bit more boring. It was no longer seized, it was sold. It was no longer fortified, it was renovated. Although one owner did put a cannon or cannons, the history's a little murky, depending on who you listen to, in the place that he'd got from India. His name was George Von heart, and his initials can still be seen right there. The castle is now in the hands of the government, who, with pressure from the Maxweeney family, did extensive renovations to make the castle suitable for tourists and family reunions. Supposedly, the family actually still possess a key to the front gate. 